I've always had some interest in sports and competing, but there was no sport that interested me enough to actually play it until I found out about esports, and more specifically, Smash Brothers. Now, if I wanted to go into full detail on why I like Smash, we could be here all day. So for the purpose of this video, I'll just talk about one aspect of it, that being that it's a relatively new game in the world of sports. Games like baseball and basketball are hundreds of years old, and the community knows pretty much everything about them, while competitive Smash, on the other hand, is only a little over 10 years old. Because of this, people playing Smash have a lot more room to experiment with what strategies work and how to counter other people's strategies. But how does this relate to anime? Because most sports anime are about these sports that are centuries old. But in the 2016 anime Ao no Kanata no Four Rhythm, its sport of flying circus mirrors Smash and esports in general for me. In the show, Flying Circus is a new sport where people compete one-on-one -on -one using magical flying shoes to score points within a given time limit. These points are earned by either racing around to touch the four posts around the ring or by touching your opponent's back. And that's most of what the rules are. Everything else is up to the players. How best to score points, what they should be prioritizing, and their general playstyle. Players can also modify their magic shoes to fit their playstyle. Because Flying Circus is a somewhat new sport, the players of the game don't really have a best way to play it yet. I feel like you could talk about Smash the same way. People still argue who the best character is, what the best way to play them is, and a myriad of other topics. In both of these sports, the players are pushing to find better ways the game can be played as a whole. Where this connection between Smash and Flying Circus really clicked for me is a story arc that takes place around the midpoint of the show. So spoiler alert! So, at this point in the story, the main cast is at their first major Flying Circus tournament, and they get absolutely destroyed by a player hardly anyone has heard of called Inui Saki. She even takes out one of the best-known players, Shindo Kazunari, to win the tournament. Inui accomplishes this feat by modifying her shoes to focus solely on speed and to take advantage of the rules of the game. At the start of every match, she uses her speed to score the first point off of a post and then defend the second post to ensure that her opponent can't score any points, thus winning by a timeout. She's essentially camping. And anyone who's played any fighting game would know that getting camped out is discouraging, especially if you're new to the game. The characters in the show feel this too, with one of the main cast, Tobisawa Misaki, feeling so disheartened she quits the game altogether. Later, Tobisawa runs into Shindo, the top player from earlier, who even after his one-sided defeat is still happily training. So she asks him why he's so happy despite his complete failure. He talks about how he's scared that his playstyle and all the work that he put into perfecting it up until then might be invalidated because of Inui's playstyle, but he still loves the game, and to have that fear in the first place means that you have to love the game. He also talks about how he enjoys experiencing the way the game is being played, changing firsthand. Having been playing Smash for two and a half years now, it was this scene that I most connected with. There's been times that I've come home from a tournament after getting flattened by a strategy I couldn't do anything against and implied that the game was changing in a way I didn't like. But seeing that change happen to a game and the feeling of finding a counterplay to that new strategy is an incredibly satisfying feeling and it makes the game feel alive. Another connection I made between these two topics is in the way that Inui approaches Flying Circus is similar to how Mewtwo King approaches Smash. For those not in the know, Mewtwo King is a professional Smash Brothers player, and he was one of the first players to look deep into the core mechanics of the game down to the last detail to try to perfect his gameplay. He researched frame data, hitboxes, and a ton of other mechanics long before such things were properly documented. Inui is similar in the way of wanting to perfect her gameplay. This includes the camping strategy that won her the tournament, but it's also revealed later in the story that she removed a limiter on her shoes. Removing this limiter allowed the shoes to work at full power and drastically improve their abilities, but no one had done this before because doing such makes the shoes almost impossible to control. Just as Mewtwo King spent a lot of time researching the tiny details of Smash Brothers to perfect his game, Inui also took on a large challenge of mastering the magic shoes to perfect her game. The fact that all these things can happen in Smash I believe shows how dynamic and underdeveloped the sport is. From new players running into unexpected roadblocks and experienced players trying to change how the game is played at large. All of these things show that this is a unique sport that is alive and changing every day. And there may not be a true esports anime yet, but with the way that this show depicted its sport of flying circus, it may be the closest thing we'll get. Anyway, I'm going back to play some more Smash. If you want to see more of these vlog type videos from me, you know what to do. See you in the next video. Bye!